Hi everyone, it's time for another edition of the Dave's Flybox series. In this video, we're going to have a deep dive into my small trout streams, bugger and small streamer flybox. I'm quite a meat and potatoes kind of guy when it comes to my streamer box. And it takes a lot to convince me to make any changes or additions. The past 40 years of fly fishing, it's basically convinced me that the only streamers I'll add to my small trout stream streamer box would be a game changer, a sparkle minnow, and an autumn splendor. Otherwise, it's straight ahead woolly buggers and muddler minnows. My biggest consideration is controlling the impact my streamer has when landing on the water, as well as keeping a baseline consistency to how it sinks as this tells me how to add weight or motion based on trout behavior or if the water is high, cold, fast, slow, murky, tannic, or clear. I use tungsten beads as they provide a weight that not only breaks the fly through the water surface tension, but it arrives without a large profile splat like a bigger fly would. The slender tie profile arrives and the dense tungsten drops quickly and the lack of parachuting in the marabou and palmered hackle allows the fly to sink at a moderate rate of two to three inches a second. On a number six 2X shank hook, I use a 3.3 millimeter tungsten bead. My marabou tails are always the upper half of a marabou strand. Once clipped, I tie it in the same length as the hook shank. This allows a narrow flow to the tail in the water, but also a pulsing out on strip pauses. It's subtle. This also removes parachuting of the bulk that slows the sink rate in the water. I use medium crystal chenille base on a size 6 2x shank hook for most of my small trout stream streamer patterns. The medium crystal chenille gives a good spacing to the hook cap for hook set and the size 6 2x shank is a happy foundational size as it stays within reach of a dragonfly, damselfly, a hex or a brown drake nymph, uh, minnows and fry, early season crayfish or giant water beetles. Okay guys, the, the crux of the size and the weight and all of that kind of good stuff is based on the splat factor. I touched on this and we really have to take ownership of how our flies arrive. If this fly smacks, well, you're in such a small environment on these small trout streams that it's fight or flight response from the trout. And um, you really have to in keep that in mind when you're fishing that a big streamer, and this is why I use these medium to small size uh, buggers and sparkle minnows, is that Big streamers on small streams in tight environments, you get one shot with really big streamers. Quite often what'll happen, your fly will land, fight or flight, that big brown, that big rainbow might turn around and chase that big streamer, and it might even mouth it or, or a short hit, and that's quite often the end of your engagement with that fish. The next cast, even if you wait five or 10 minutes, most often those big streamers, that fish will kind of have a look at it, it'll chase, it'll respond, but majority of the time it won't eat when it comes to resident fish. Now, the reason I use these smaller streamers in my streamer box is because if I miss a fish, um, a take, uh, a fish aggressively slashes at, the, at my streamers, what'll end up happening is I know how long that fish will take to rest out and go home, and restation, settle down. And now I think I cast at that angle. What if I cast at that angle and did an upstream men? So instead of just bringing that fly downstream at an angle of, at me, I can reach my rod and my line so that my retrieve and my, and my retrieve comes directly across. Or I could even cast with an upstream mend, an upstream reach mend, to get my line and my leader to arc around and I can bring, I can land my fly here and it can arc upstream and away and then back across the fish's nose. 